Welcome Psychologists. I'm your professor, Ryan Keith. You'll notice I'm in a slightly different setting this week, and that might be because the internet is down at Santa Fe's Davis Center, or it might be because I want to make a connection between this week's material and America's favorite caffeine retailer. Um, there's a lot of interesting research into who we are and who we think we are and why it is we think we are that kind of person. Uh, but one thing that social psychologists seem to be able to conclude pretty easily is that your self-concept, uh, how you like to think of yourself, how you actually do think of yourself, uh, differs markedly from the actual person that you are. In general, and we talked about this a little bit with social cognition and the introduction of social psychology, we like to imagine that we are certain kinds of people and that other people are certain kinds of people. And the difference between one kind of person and another is mostly how that being that kind of person predicts what kinds of actions we're going to take. You know somebody's a good person because they do good things. And if you know that somebody's a bad person, you can anticipate that they will do bad things. Law-abiding citizens follow the law and criminals commit crimes except when they don't. Uh, we see that uh, the ways that people try to describe themselves differ quite a bit from the actions that they actually take. And some of our discussions uh, from earlier and your introductions to social psychology seem to underscore some of the key ways in which we think of ourselves differently. This week, there are two main ways that I want you to think about how we think of ourselves inaccurately. Uh, two main uh, predictions and descriptions of how people choose to think about themselves. And as a result, how our self-concepts are different from who we are as people. First though, I wanna talk really briefly about the self-concept. In a big way, your self-concept can also be described as a self-schema. It's how you think of yourself, but it's also how you organize all of the information about yourself. Do you think of yourself as a successful person or as a failure? Are you somebody that when you activate the schema for me, you think of athlete or sedentary person? Do you think of yourself as someone who's smart or somebody who's a little bit slow? None of this is particularly accurate. A lot of it may be harmful. Some of it might be helpful, but it's all part of how we automatically think of ourselves, whether or not it's true that that's actually who we are. In examining how we construct our self-concept or self-schema, again, how we organize all that information about ourselves the same way you organize information about what a dog is, uh, social psychologists have proposed two main theories about how we do that. The first is called self-verification theory, and the second is self-enhancement theory. Coming from the term verification, as in veracity or truthfulness, or to verify something, self-verification theory posits that you think of yourself in a certain way and you remember the kinds of actions you take in an attempt to think of yourself as a consistent kind of person. When there's something that's really important to you and who you are, like maybe your religion or your work or your family, you'll tend to remember things about yourself, thoughts that you've had, actions you've taken, actions you've elected not to take that reinforce those qualities in yourself. If you think of yourself, for example, as an extrovert, you'll think of all of the times that you have elected to spend time with friends and interact with people rather than to sit at home by yourself. One of the things that I often notice in my classes, and you may notice in your own classes, however, is that the students who are, even the students who are the most extroverted, often I walk in a class and they're not saying anything. They're sitting silently, avoiding any kind of contact with anyone else. A social psychologist would tell you that this only supports the power of the social situation and that ultimately we elect to think of ourselves as extroverts in large part because that's part of maintaining a predictable understanding of the world. You like to think of yourself as the same person today that you were yesterday from moment to moment, from year to year, to the extent that when I think of myself uh, back when I was 12 or 8 or 6, I imagine me just shorter. And in order to do that, I have to selectively remember certain kinds of information, regularly verifying that I am and always have been a certain kind of person. Self-enhancement theory, on the other hand, and I think this is going to sound like common sense to a lot of you guys, self-enhancement theory says that we always want to think of ourselves in a more favorable light than we actually are. Right? So we want to think of ourselves as the best possible person that we can. This uh, is explained and also explains a little bit of the overconfidence bias that we talked about next week, or uh, talked about last week. But it also helps explain why uh, people who commit heinous crimes think of themselves as good people. Uh, people who uh, defraud others and cheat systems and regularly don't follow laws for selfish reasons think of themselves as giving and generous and good and even kind people. 
how even when we do really poorly at something, we tend to remember only our successes. This week we're going to talk about a lot of concepts tied to these ideas of self-verification and self-enhancement, a lot of the machinery behind how we think of ourselves the way we do and why we tend to think of ourselves that way. As always, if you have any questions tied to the videos, the lesson, the concepts, even the tests coming up at the end of this week, of course I want you to reach out to me. But all week long, I want you to be thinking about yourself, reading the instructions uh, for this upcoming research and analysis assignment that's all about researching who you are. Remember, this assignment is not about who you really are, but re-examining why you think of yourself the way you do. So, as always, reach out to me during office hours, uh, talk to me via email or messages, and I'll look forward to, you, to uh, talking to you a lot more about why we are the kind of people we are and why we think of ourselves as entirely different people.